the latest joint channel here over at Subscribestar. Thanks to everyone who's gone over there. So leaving the kids alone is problematic. Houston, we have a problem. Call of Duty, getting gay with kids. So the left wing is focused on your kids, not their own kids, because most of them don't have any. And, and that's a good thing because a lot of them are... Uh, felons with records that deal with things a prurient interest with those under the age of majority so they need to brainwash the kids and these small conflicts are tactical levels um, of conflict and then the thing is at the strategic level there's no winning with school uh, government schools that about that that war is there's no way to win that war it would take um i mean it could it, it would take more energy than i think people have um resources for the the way it is to sidestep it is the bigger picture is to focus on homeschooling and not just homeschooling because there is an economy of scale with schools i think to set up like small garage schools and have a i don't know how many kids it's like it's just, it's almost just as easy to teach six kids as it is to teach your own kids or maybe even a few more in a garage school or a living room school it's like you know to convert your living room over to a um uh, essentially a school for for the next 10 years it's not you know it's like those are some hills that are worth dying on it's like but i have to give up my garage there to a lot of people they're gonna be like yeah yeah we'll we'll knock the wall out between the garage and the living room and we'll, we'll build a, a school and we'll just like we'll just do it um for a lot of people yeah that's that's a worthwhile expenditure of their time to create the next to create a better next generation who are not brainwashed by all this kind of globalist bullshit propaganda where they're taught that they're awesome and their their people are awesome and that they should love themselves and their tribe and their history and they're not taught to hate, hate themselves yeah that's worse um that's that's definitely worth um giving up your your living room to uh to build a homeschool at home so the thing is um you could do that uh, you could just like get a half dozen parents together and, and pay one parent to teach and simultaneously yes lobby the government to end taxes you know property taxes for government schools and to end the department of education it's time to start dismantling those government programs we can start with education let the counties handle it the more local the more more local the better i don't even stay at the state level i say let it handle it at the county level the city level or something like that more localizing things um decentralized local um connections and groups is is much much better than centralized authority because for an outside group to subvert and corrupt it's much easier to do that with centralized authority you just can't do that at the local level you'd need you need your fingers in too many pies or you need your tentacles of the octopus in too many pies so some video game guy um nick merck or something the details don't matter because he's like he's just one of a there's dozens of examples of people like that being canceled um somebody some uh cambridge university guy was getting a master's program or something and he said something very mild like something the equivalent of leave the kids alone and he got kicked out of his he was oxford he got kicked out of his master's program because he said something like that um, that's insane. Like where, where we're going with this is, this is just Mao's, Mao's China where with the children's army, like is, is Mao's China taught in schools? Is the Bolshevik revolution taught in schools? No, of course not. Because the teachers and the, uh, the, the head of the, uh, teachers union and the department of education are all literal Bolsheviks. They're not going to teach about the atrocities of Bolshevism. Anyway, I dress like Mario on, on purpose. Um, so the video game guy uh, is a public figure. That's what I'm saying. He, he's who's looking at the current degeneracy. In this case, I don't know. It might have been the Armenian Christians versus Antifa, or in I, I think that's in LA, and then up in Canada, it's the Muslims versus Antifa. But it's dealing with the um, this BLT kind of degeneracy taught in schools and the uh, the bias media coverage. If you just search uh, the story for Call of Duty, the bias in the media is insane. The media doesn't even attempt to be impartial anymore. It, I mean, it hasn't tried to be. I mean, it's, it was never. Obviously, the media was always far left wing, but every decade it just gets worse and worse to where we are now, where it's like it doesn't. If you if you're old enough to remember the media from a few decades ago, you're like this doesn't even this isn't the media at all like to even call it the media is is to change the definition of it anyway so the fight is generally over the blt stuff in schools the degeneracy that's being pushed on kids which if you're not aware of then you must have been in a coma briefly they're brainwashing kids to think they're something they're not how do i say this on i don't know if i can say this on youtube but none of this is real 
you could do this with anything if you wanted to push bicycle riding as the hot new thing they absolutely could or physical fitness in general the government and schools and media can brainwash kids into believing almost anything and it should tell you something critical that they're brainwashing the kids into, and it's not it's not something benign or it's not even something beneficial like hey hey physical fitness we're all going to eat less and start exercising and start walking and eating less diet and nutrition this is a vegetable perhaps and home gardening so you can grow your vegetables on the cheap perhaps you're not familiar you've never seen a radish before you can actually grow them very very easily in your backyard or in a, a grow bag or a pot on your patio it's like there's a lot you can do in even a small space if you, if you want to do it and kind of start getting your uh, your hands uh, get that green thumb going on um, but it's never something beneficial like that like eating right exercising uh, that kind of thing it's always the most abhorrent filthy um I'll say Sodom and Gomorrah levels of evil that they're pushing. I mean, there was another period in, in history. I don't say anything in the comments. This is remarkably similar to what we're going through now. Just history kind of rhyming and repeating. Um, so stuff they're brainwashing kids into now is, hey, why don't you take some puberty blockers and cross sex hormones and get elective surgery to have body parts removed and, and um, uh, remove the ability for you to procreate the next generation? Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. No, no, no. That's something out of like Dante's most inner circle of hell. This is just fucking nightmare fuel that, that they're doing to kids. Have you seen the pictures? Listen, friend, though, I know a lot of people try to avoid stuff online. Some of those pictures, you have to see a few of those pictures. You have to F and see it. You have to see it. You have to know what you're dealing with. Like to get it through your head that they're actually, they're actually doing this. You have to see some of the after pictures that they're doing to kids. They're actually doing this and you realize oh we're not going to vote our way out of this are we no no you're not you're not gonna there's no way there's no, no no way that's not you like you hear this you know it's not 4chan hyperbolic basement dwelling type of stuff it's just the brutal truth you look at this and you're like oh ooh, there's no political solution to this like this is way 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 you know that period of time that was that happened about a few years a few decades ago uh, anyway, doesn't it strike you as odd that nobody's speaking out against this? Nobody who's got a um, a public uh, social media footprint. Everybody just kind of passively accepts this, because anyone who speaks out against this will get canceled. In a case like this, it gets the public outrage. The Twitter mob will attack them. They'll get them fired. They'll have their business or their livelihood destroyed. So, do you think that has a chilling effect on the shape and? direction of the discourse where a lot of people some people are in a golden cage which means it you know affects their finances to not speak out and a lot of people they look at it and go like you know uh i just don't have it in me to fight this and like just get my life destroyed if you have a public social media footprint because you know to stand up like there's people who are like those those girls who are the swimmers who are protesting like that swimmer girl one of the swimmer girls who was protesting against this her dad got fired or if you're a <coughs> you're married and you you speak up against this not only of course you'll get fired but your spouse might get fired your kids might get kicked out of private schools it's like there are very serious consequences so for the people who do speak up against this like they know that this is a i don't know a joan of arc moment like this is something you're dedicating your life to if you're if you're a public figure and you decide to go down this path like owen benjamin i know people love or hate him um he spoke up uh, about this like a decade ago in hollywood the stuff they're doing doing to kids and he was um he was in Hollywood. He was a comedian, stand-up comedian. He had some bit parts. Like he was in there, and then he just spoke up against it. And like they took that away instantly. He, he got his agency fired him. Everyone fired him. It's like he was in instant. They just flicked the switch. And he, he now you know I don't know what he does. He does stand-up comedy now at small clubs, and he's got like an online social media footprint. But um, he spoke up against it, and they were able to just turn it off instantly because they had a narrative. And anyone who goes up against the narrative. Um, they will use the machine to go after you. All the the, the financial institutions um, will, and social media can pressure. And I will say, it does feel like people are finally kind of starting to focus on this, and going, "Oh, I don't know if this is the direction we want to go in." Anyway, the um, the reason they're able to do all this kind of stuff is because the far left is supported by the corporate machine, because the machine is you know Fink at BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard and the influence and finances of um, those other names of of the fomenters of discord, the Machiavellian uh, manipulators in the financial industry and all those other kind of NGOs, those those big name guys. 
Doesn't it strike you as odd that the West is controlled by these puppet masters and nobody ever suggests that perhaps it'd be better if these NGOs were controlled by the governments in which they do business instead of having NGOs have such disproportionate influence? Like they're, they're really, they have the power of nations, but they don't answer to nations. And maybe it'd be better to just like end that and say, oh, we're just going to seize control of the, are you saying we should seize the banks? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, I'm saying that. This current situation is going to lead to a civil war and World War III. So yes, it'd be better to do things that we haven't done before to avoid that. The, the left wing is untouchable because the media, the financial institutions, and the deep state protect them. That's why we're headed into this Sodom and Gomorrah. So Andy No is looking at some of these Antifa people who were out there attacking parents who got arrested. They don't have kids in the district, uh, in the school, they don't have kids, period. So one of them has a criminal record for child uh, stuff. And he was out there saying that kids need to be other people's kids, not his kids. Other people's kids need to be brainwashed into the BLT stuff so they can be future catamites, essentially. And their narrative is that the Armenians or the Muslims are far right wing hate groups. And, and it's something, like they try to tie it to uh, people of European descent in every case, because just going after Armenians or Muslims is is problematic for them because antifa is um is what they are they um they're uh i mean you can see them when they get arrested it's like there's not a whole lot of diversity in your left-wing group what's going on y'all look exactly the same where the right-wing groups are remarkably remarkably diverse <laughs> how does that work? yeah the right ring is like all hugo boss it's like that's a pretty welcoming um hugo boss if they're all um I think the narrative is perhaps not as we were led to believe. But the uh, parents who are protesting are parents of the kids in schools. They're there to protect their kids. But Antifa doesn't have kids in the school. Most of them don't have kids at all, which is a very good thing. So this isn't a bunch of parents who disagree. And the thing is, most of them are um, really, not, really not attractive. I mean, there's a, what is it called? Physogamy is real. There's a... There's a, there's a theory on that. I did a video for Odyssey and Bitchute on, on physogamy. Um, anyway, so a bunch of parents who, uh, who uh, disagree with, uh, with this narrative that's going on. It's, it's one group of parents and a group of useful idiots who are willing to use violence to force people's kids to push this kind of degenerate brainwashing. Their motive doesn't make sense. It's not their kids, but they're willing to attack parents of children and get arrested for it while they know they have felonious criminal records dealing with prurient interests around kids and Andy No is gonna is gonna publicize that and and it does it's like oh these people are kitty diddlers and they're pushing to further like this is like all actually happening I mean it's like you're not gonna be able to sit on your couch too much longer if this sounds like mental illness that's exactly what it is thanks ACLU anyway uh, make sure you got your rice and beans and your uh, fishing lures and your home garden going the more food independent you are the better you, uh, no, you're probably not going to be able to feed your not. You're not going to be able to feed yourself totally with a little backyard garden, but um, you can get a respectable amount of potatoes, corn, and beans in a very small space. It's uh, my first time seriously gardening, and I'm absolutely loving it. You can start with like 10 gallon grow bags. I got like uh, 12 grow bags from uh, Amazon or something. 10, 12 10 gallon grow bags, really reasonable. It's just a cheap way to get started grow your uh, grow your veggies and also plant flowers to attract pollinators and i mean it's really it's it's you know it's something to start and it's like the first year is not going to be amazing but then after that you're just going to get better and better at it and you're like oh it's there's something to be said for a little bit of food independence um the government really very much doesn't want you and the left doesn't want you doing that either the left wants you like that's why they're so against like gardening prepping canning um, farmers markets, uh, in-group preferences, in-group communities, those kind of things, because those are all a certain type of people. Um, and the left, besides that, the in-group thing, which they're, they're terrified of, they're terrified of you having in-group preferences. For them, it's, it's of course, the way. But um, they want you as dependent and helpless on the government as possible, just as fat and stupid and addicted to you know high fructose corn syrup and fast food. And uh, no, 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 you, in an emergency, you need to go to a shelter. It's like, no, I think it's better to shelter in place. And it's better to have, you know, things prepared ahead of time. You know, a couple hundred pounds of rice go a long way. But, you know, the, the it's like if you have a yard, it's like there's no point in having a yard and not having potatoes and rice and corn and beans and tomatoes and basil and marigolds and flowers and 
you know, all the stuff that goes, like radishes go a long way and, and, and spices and, and chili peppers, like people will trade for a lot of kind of things. You know, it's like just the Boy Scout mo motto, you know, is there going to be a collapse of civilization? No, probably not. But um, food independence is a good thing. And it's also, uh, I don't know, there's a psychological like Zen in the art of gardening. I've got um, like bok choy and, and lettuce and stuff growing. It's all these different colored, I don't know what they're called, brassicas or something. Um, different colored lettuces and spinaches and the tops are aesthetically pleasing. I mean, there's something to be said for getting getting your, and I'm a little over enthusiastic because this is my like my first serious garden. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.